Yeah. And then you can just send that to me. Thank you. We have been looking at Vijnana Nauka or Swarupa Anusandhana Ashtakam. Both are uh, the same title, uh, two, two different titles for the same text, basically. And we have been looking at uh, verses four, five, and six, uh, whose uh, purport is to introduce us to the concept of Swarupa Lakshana of Brahman and Tatastha Lakshana of Brahman. Swarupa Lakshana means that without which something cannot be. The intrinsic definition of Brahman, which is Satyam Jnanam Anantam or Sat Chit Ananda, that which is the source of all existence, everything exists because it exists, and that which is all knowing or and which is all pervasive and limitless, and that is called a Swarupa Lakshana. Then we have, but that is not enough. That kind of Lakshana is, is, is uh, insufficient uh, because it's one thing to say, uh, you know, Brahman is this and I am free of everything. It's nice to say that, but in order to see that really, we need, the, we need to reckon with the next definition of what is the connection between Brahman and the Jagat. The manifest universe belongs, we said, this is just a summary of the earlier session, the morning session. The manifest universe belongs to an order of reality that is not as real as Satchidananda. Why? Because it, it is a Kalpita. Kalpita means it is a creation. It is a projection. So in that sense, what is it? It is, it is a, the, the, the universe is not something that is non-existent because a non-existent Jagat cannot give you problems. If you are going on the road, a non-existent pothole on the road cannot give you some kind of a back pain if you go over it. Uh, so, uh, but at the same time, an existent Jagat, which is problematic, is, uh, is ontologically problematic for us because it does not, uh, you know, that means the problems are permanent. The problems are here to stay and the problems are uh, uh, very impossible to remove. So therefore, what we say is the, uh, that the Jagat has an iffy existence, meaning it is, it is totally dependent upon Brahman and that Brahman is you and we talked about how it is dependent upon Brahman in the sense of all things are jada inert they their existence has to be cognized by a sentient entity and that entity is you and this sentience which you share in which uh, uh, the human being shares in common with Ishvara with with Brahman that is where the equation is made between oneself and Ishvara not on the level of, uh, uh, you know, prowess or uh, overlordship, etc. There one comes up, uh, you know, short because we are, uh, you know, uh, the human being, the jiva is connected to this upadhi and, and a limited upadhi, a finite body, mind, sense complex, whereas Ishvara has an infinite body, mind, sense complex. Uh, there is no, uh, all bodies are the, the bodies of Ishvara. It's infinite upadhi. And so it's like the relationship between the wave and the ocean. And the wave is nothing but the ocean. And, but at the same time, when we look at the upadhi, the shape and name and form called wave, and then when we look at the shape, name, form called the ocean, the two don't seem to have anything in common. The wave is, is, has a complex. I am small. <laughs> I am not all. I, you know, how can I be the ocean? I am not the ocean. I am just a small little thing. And so what does it need? It needs a guru, uh, a, a, a guru who waves and tells it, a wave guru, a waving guru who says, uh, but not a wavery guru, okay? A wavic guru who says, you are the ocean. Because if anybody touches you, they touch the ocean. 
what is the what are you made up of oh they say i am made up of water what is the ocean made up of ocean is also made up of water so on that level you transcend the various the finite limited upadhi the container called the jiva and you also transcend the uh, the, the infinite upadhi called ishvara and on the level of satchidananda that existent sentient consciousness uh, that uh, which is which never comes to an end the there alone we have the equation and therefore both the definitions of brahman are important otherwise how are you going to live in the universe so basically the universe does not enjoy the same order of reality as brahman we have been looking into that how do you say so because in the same manner the clay does not enjoy the same reality, uh, reality as the pot the pot and the clay uh, have a connection what is the connection Ka, you know karya karana connection karya karya means what karya means effect karana cause there is a cause effect connection in the sense that the clay is the cause and the pot is the uh, is is the karya effect now uh, as we can see the karan the karya the effect is non separate from the cause is it not so if you say pot really what is pot the pot is nothing but clay the weight of the pot is the weight of clay the color of the pot is the color of the clay and the smell of the pot is nothing but the smell of clay in fact the whole pot is clay whole pot is clay but then is the clay pot no we have already seen this yesterday we saw this example pot is clay clay is not pot so in relation to clay the pot is called we cannot say that the the pot is non existent yet we cannot say the pot is existent because the existence belongs to clay not to the pot and so where is the what is the reality of the pot we have a specific word mithya mithya means it is a dependent reality that which depends on something else is called mithya so what does mithya depend on mithya has to depend on that which is real because it is neither real nor unreal so it has to depend on that which is completely real and so therefore what mithya is uh, uh, is is the name or the reality statement for the pot pot is mithya pot is mithya and then uh, clay is satyam satyam means real unchanging same so in in relation to the jagat and brahman also brahma satyam jagan mithya the jagat is mithya mithya mind you doesn't mean false doesn't mean uh, uh, doesn't mean non existent mithya means uh, uh, the, that which is uh, that which is dependent real mithya has two two definitions that which depends on sat one definition and that which is non separate from sat in fact it is uh, mithya is sat sat is not mithya that's why i keep saying brahman uh, jagat is brahman brahman is not the jagat so sat uh, mithya is sat sat is not mithya and then what so therefore we have a uh, uh, we have a very nice uh, verse brahma satyam jagan mithya jagat is mithya so first is the first definition is adhishthana ananyat it is non separate from sat sat is not mithya but mithya is sat then what then uh, it is dependent on sat that is the first definition of mithya the second definition of mith- mithya is sat asad bhyam anirvachya anirvachya means you cannot say it is existent and at the same time you cannot say it is non existent the that is the that is the reality 
called mithya. Same thing, you look at anything. The body, is it existent? Yes, I can look at myself in the mirror, in a cell phone photo. I, when I'm trying to take a selfie, I can look at myself. And so, yes, you know, the body is existent, but then what happens? It is changing all the time. It is not really real. It is born. It is subject to death. It is subject to what we call, uh, what is that? Shad Vikaraha, the six kinds of modifications. It is, it is, it is, uh, uh, it is subject to the many, many kinds of modifications. It grows old. It changes. It, uh, it, 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 it dies and it becomes infirm. All these things are subject to huge number numbers of modifications even as we speak and so therefore mithya is uh, a, 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 is is you cannot say the body is existent meaning it's not like such unchanging infinite and uh, the same all the time you cannot say that at all at the same time you cannot dismiss the body as non existent because it is available for transaction the whole mithya is like this. The whole mithya world is exactly like this. Anything you take is like that. And uh, to illustrate this further, in the tradition, we have two, we, we have, uh, two other ver uh, verbs. Bhati. Even here we saw in verse number four or five, the word bhati, abhati. So bhati shines. Shines means how? like the sun shines. And then that which is sat, that we, say, we can say bhati, it has its own shine, self-illumining, self-shining, atma, I, bhati. And then what? Uh, so, uh, atma or brahman, bhati. And the rest of it, what? Anu bhati, shines after like the moon and the planets, they shine after the sun. The sun is the original sign, uh, shine and the others are just shining after. So this is the, uh, the, 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 this is the connection. That's why in the Mundaka Upanishad, we have a very nice mantra, Arati mantra. Natatra Suryo Bhati Na Chandra Tarakam Nema vidyuto bhanti kuto yamagnihi Tameva bhanta manubhati sarvam Tasya bhasa sarvam idam vibhati. So, what does it mean? Natatra suryo bhati. There means in that self shining self, you don't need the light of the sun to reveal the self. Just like the sun cannot be revealed with a torch, with a flashlight. It, doesn't, it is not requiring that at all. Similarly, this eye need not be re re uh, revealed by any other force in the world because it is self-revealing, self-revealing eye. And then, natatra uh, suryo uh, bhati. And then what else uh, is not there? Na chandra tarakam. The stars and the uh, uh, the stars uh, and the moon also need not be there. They are also not there. The stars and the moons are not there, and the fire is not there, uh, and uh, the vidyut vidyut means the uh, what is that called lightning is not there. Nothing is there. Then what is there? <laughs> it's it's light alone is there. In fact, the sun shines because I shine. The sun illumines the whole jagat, it's true. But then who is the one that says, I say, uh, I am the one who objectifies the sun. Who is the one who objectifies the sun? Who is the one who objectifies the moon? That is me alone. And so therefore, this, if we can call it that, original shine, this original shine, a.k.a. Brahman and then everything else is a pale reflection of that self-evident I, the whole Jagat. So the Jagat is non-separate from Brahman, non-separate from Sat, 
but sat transcends the jagat this much we have to understand so let us go further let us look at this uh, uh, verse number 7 anantam vibhum sarvayonim niriham shivam sangahinam yadom karagamyam nirakaram atyujvalam mrityuhinam param brahma nityam tadevaham asmi anantam that which is limitless never comes to end antam navidyate antah navidyate yasya anantam an antam navidyate that which has no end and that which is all over the place meaning all pervasive vibhu sarva yoni sarvasya yonihi that which is the cause of everything yoni means cause the source of everything the cause of everything niriha means that which is changeless niriha changeless and motionless this is what it is then shivam shivam means that which is auspicious that which is free of guilt hurt pains sorrows fears regrets etc auspicious niriham uh, shivam sangahinam that which is unaffected by anything else why because the whole thing that one is dealing with is mithya mithya cannot affect satya just like the uh, the pot cannot uh, affect clay the pot cannot attack clay <laughs> because the pot is clay that's how that's how it is so sangahinam clay is not pot so the clay is clay pot is clay and so sangahinam means uninvolved even though it is lending its existence and its uh, shine its knowledge to all things in the universe itself is not affected by anything with which it is associated and then to understand this more you can go back to the you can go back to what you can go back to that uh, example of the crystal with the yellow cloth pink cloth green cloth and then you have various colors of crystals uh, but those crystals are not affected by the cloth which is put behind them that is why sangahinam shivam pure freed of papa and punya no karmic uh, legacies and no pain no sorrow no nothing and then and omkara gamyam gamyam understood understood by the word om very very nice this om is a word that means both tatastha lakshana and swarupa lakshana it is a word it is a syllable the, you know it is uh, uh, used in the upanishad it is loaded it's a syllable that is loaded with uh, intentionally with the meaning of bhagavan uh, both as tatastha lakshana and as swarupa lakshana how because the word om is formed with the syllables a u and ma and each one is loaded with some kind of a uh, you know by the upanishad with certain values what is a the waker vishwa uh, who is connecting to the waking world vira that is just symbolize let the word a stand for the waker the upanishad says and the waker is not waking up in a vacuum there is a wake, waking world the world is awake the world is uh, expanding and the the waker relates to this waking world and so vishwa the individual waker and virat the total ishvara in the form of the waking world virat and then then we have vishwa virat and then we have uh, you know the who uh, the dreamer the dreamer uh, connect the the uh, the tejasa dreamer tejasa dreamer and this tejasa relates to uh, the uh, on the collective level hiranya garbha ishvara in a in a causal form 
Ishvara in the form of that power which is ready to uh, which is ready to create. This is Hiranyagarbha. The potential to create is called Hiranyagarbha. So Ishvara is in a form that is ready to create the potential to create. And uh, so that is the dream world. And the Upanishad says, let Makara mm, stand for the sleeper. And the sleeper, which is Pragna, Prakarshena Agnya, relates to the uh, uh, relates to the world of Ishvara. In fact, the sleeper is non-separate from Ishvara uh, while asleep. Pragya Ishvara Makar. So when the, the uh, Uma together they form a Sandhi. Om. And after the um, there is a little silence. Before one, after one Om, there is a silence. Before the next Om, there is a silence. So if you chant, Om, 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 there is that silence. That silence is also laden with the meaning that silence is Turiya. <laughs> ah, Turiya means you. You who is not the waker, not the waking world, not the dreamer, not the dream world and the world of that is about to, the potential to create, not the sleeper, not the sleeping world, but that consciousness, that sentient consciousness without which none of these can exist, but which exists without or any of them, which is self-standing, free and is able to exist without all of them. This is the, this is what is Om. And uh, in the uh, Kathopanishad, this Omkara is, uh, is very, very, uh, you know, uh, is talked about also by Lord Yama. Uh, and he talks of it and uh, he explains it to Nachiketa. Omkara, uh, you know, yet Alambanam. You know, so Jagataha Alambanam. It is that upon which the entire world de uh, the, uh, depends. The universe depends on which that is Om. And the Om is independent of which universe that is also Om. The Sagunam Brahma, the uh, Bhagavan in a manifest form, like we invoke in the temples, Vishnu, Krishna, etc., that is also Om. And Satchidanandam Brahma, that uh, uh, Bhagavan from the standpoint of the intrinsic definition, the Swarup Akshana is also Om. And so this is what it is. Very, very beautiful, this Om, Om, Om. Uh, uh, this is how to uh, chant. And the more you are in Om, the more you are at home with yourself. And that is what is called Omkara Gamyam. When you know Omkara, you know the, uh, you, you, you know yourself. When you know the meaning of the word Omkara, you know Bhagava. How? As yourself. This Omkara is called Pranava, Prakarshena Navaha, that which is ever new, never old, ever fresh. Pranava. So then, Nirakaram. Nirakaram is formless, no form. Which form? All forms are Bhagavan's forms. But Bhagavan himself, herself, you can't even say himself or herself, no gender, no form. Nirakaram, Brahman has no form. Ati Ujjvalam, of the biggest of shines, very resplendent, shining, shining, shining. Mrityuhinam, free of time, deathless, free of time. And that deathless, uh, uh, that deathless, Brahman, which is uh, which is free of time, which is there all the time, which is that which is that limitless one, that alone I am. I am that alone, nothing other than this. That alone I am. Very very nice. Then we go to uh, verse number eight. Okay. Yadananda Sindhavani Magnaf Kumansyat 
अद्यालासमस्तप्रपंच यदानस्फुत परम ब्रह्म नित्यम तदेवाहमस्मी यदानंद सिंधौ निमग्न कुमस्याद्यालास समस्त प्रपंच यदानस्फुत परम ब्रह्म नित्यम तदेवाहमस्मी आनंद सिंधौ in the ocean of limitlessness in the ocean of limitlessness ananda sindhau uh, then what happens uh, you know uh, nimagna puman puman means person person is nimagna nimagna means uh, uh, immersed immersed nimagna immersed when a person puman syat when the person is what ananda sindhau nimagna he is dive he has dived into the ocean of limitlessness what is this ocean of limitlessness your own nature i mean how is this ocean of limitlessness revealed by going to a teacher and studying and you know we saw all those things by going to a teacher by studying by being with the teacher and understanding that there is no other way to overcome self ignorance other than exposure to vedanta there is no other way absolutely not and uh, so so therefore what so therefore this understanding is uh, is paramount that this uh, you know the, the that uh, i am this brahman and when this understanding is gained it's as though you are swimming or immersed deeply in a placid lake no disturbance from outside no disturbance from within and then as you are in this lake dipping in this lake then over there there is a little ripple and it becomes quiet over this side of the lake there is a little eddy uh, some kind of a little whirlpool something happens then it becomes quiet what is that and the author very beautifully in this metaphor says it is exactly like the jagat समस्त प्रपंच इट इज लाइक द जगत हाउ इज द जगत द जगत इज लाइक अ लिटिल रिपल इन द ओशन ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस लिमिटलेस कॉन्शियसनेस अ लिटिल रिपल अ लिटिल यू नो अ लिटिल अपियरेंस दैट्स ऑल इट इज यू नो जस्ट लाइक वेन द चिल्ड्रन थ्रो अ पेबल इन टू अ लेक वेन यू यू नो एज द पेबल सिंक्स एंड एज द पेबल एंटर्स द सर्फिस ऑफ द वॉटर it creates some kind of ripples the whole jagat about which we complain all the time about which the person says i can't handle it it is too much i don't know where to go i can't do this i can't do that help help i need help i have no support i have no friends i have no money different different people's complaints they are just like this i have no friends i have no money i have uh, you know nothing at all i need a break i need help i need a holiday then the holiday itself was stressful after that i need a holiday from the holiday i need another holiday all these things what are they just mere ripples on the surface of my of the ocean of awareness and why do these ripples come avidya vilasah <laughs> the ripples are caused by pebbles of ignorance the play of ignorance so the pebble of ignorance meaning i am no good that's the pebble <laughs> the pebble of ignorance you know hits this oceanic consciousness and causes a little ripple that's all it is that is the universe how much effect does a little pebble have on a vast lake no effect at all similarly for a gnani for a person of knowledge who understands these teachings very well for such a person there is nothing here nothing at all there is there is no disturbance in fact the the jagat prayah you know jagat 
जगत है ऑफ दिस जगत विस्मृति प्राय है जगत इज मोस्टली जगत विस्मृति प्राय है देर इज अ देर इज अ से मीन्स द जगत इज मोस्टली फॉर गॉट वेन इज इट फॉर गॉट वेन यू आर नॉट ऑलवेज वरीड अबाउट वॉट इट इज डूइंग टू मी बिकॉज नाउ यू हैव अदर थिंग्स टू डू यू हैव योर ओन यू आर नॉट रिलाइंग अपॉन द जगत for your validation and for your mental health emotional health financial health and nothing you the jagat is just coming along like a shadow you keep on walk, walking and you are not scared of the shadow because you have cast the shadow your light cast the shadow so you are not worried about the shadow but again the shadow is shady so it belongs in its own place and it is not real it is not as real as you that's why if you walk on the water if you walk near the water and the shadow falls in the body of water you don't have to dry the shadow off with a towel you don't have to towel the shadow off why because it is the, it is almost non existence and here also this you, you don't give the shadow a time the time of day it just comes along where you go and similarly the whole jagat just is there it is not an object of your hatred an object of your stress your worry it's not a place of conflict it is a benign expression of bhagavan and uh, you know there is a verse composed by adi shankara which says yasya nishvasitam vedaha nishvasitam is by whom the Uh, the the vedas were just exhaled so the whole universe is exhaled by bhagavan as easily as you inhale and exhale the whole universe was as though projected by bhagavan just like you project objects people events and situations in your dream the entire jagat is projected by bhagavan is gone separate for, from bhagavan goes back to bhagavan effortlessly and so then so therefore i how do i have to be i have to not take this seriously i have to not take the, all the things in the jagat seriously this one is out to get me that one is out to attack me this one is bad and that one is an idiot and this one should have not done this and that one should have not done that on and on and on and on on and on and so therefore the the, the verse here says यदा न स्फुरति अस्फुरति यत् अद्भुतम् यन्निमित्तम् यन्निमित्तम् यद् अद्भुतम् मींस व्हिच कॉज दैट कॉजलेस कॉज यू नो दिस इज यू नो दी इट इज वंड्रस द वंड्रस कॉज व्हाट डज इट मीन द वंड्रस कॉज दैट द रिपल्स अपीयर and appear to cause a disturbance on that which is not connected to the the even though the person is dipped in the ocean uh, or the placid lake the ripples of the ocean do not belong to the person similarly when the person is a gnani immersed in the lake of self delight self awareness and consciousness in that lake of ananda the person is immersed so any kind of difficulties and disturbances by the jagat do not cause disturbance in the person of knowledge which is the reason to study vedanta this is one of the main reason to study vedanta that the jagat does not overwhelm me does not overpower me does not do anything to me i am free of the jagat yada nas purati so when uh, when when you are with yourself the jagat has no problem at all that it doesn't does not pose any problems then that's why you are able to say oh today was a good day good day means what <laughs> nothing bothered me i was able to go about my day without getting bothered by people things situations etc that's a good day and we wish everybody wishes one another have a good day i really didn't know what that meant but i suppose this is what it is have a good day means may may the day not not have many attacks from the the jagat and in fact even if there are if, if you are attacked by the jagat if you are blindsided by the people in the jagat it is not you who is getting affected 
it is the mind it is the senses it is all on that level alone this is what it is param brahma nityam tadeva aham asmi very very beautiful and yadananda sindhau nimagnah pumansya yeah we have seen the whole thing and next one let us look at the next one it was one one more thing i wanted to see here yeah i want to go back to uh, to bus number 6 uh, uh, here because there are a couple of things i thought that i wanted to address before we go into verse number 9 and 10 so here it says yad ananda leshaihi samanandi vishvam so that which i call jagat which is delightful really i mean how can you say the jagat is boring it's not wherever you see there are colors and there are people going about their day reproducing their lives there are uh, uh, there are people there are trees there are so many life forms for which you don't even have uh, you don't even have time to count, count the life forms or to get to know them there are so many life forms and then you look up at the sky the galaxies the stars and the new jim james webb telescope is sending us so many various kinds of uh, photos of the universe very very clear uh, uh, here to four either to four unseen photographs for in full resolution and gorgeous color all of them are coming and so there is so much to see and in fact the world is a delightful place not a sorrowful place but then i have a complex and what is the complex the complex is that i think of the happiness belonging to brahman as away from jagat and then the popular understanding of various uh, what is that called various uh, shlokas and and all in the upanishads do not help even the bhagavad gita when it's not interpreted correctly uh, people get uh, people get uh, completely side tracked and say oh you have to control the mind and here arjuna is crying in chapter 6 and cannot control the mind but still these people who think they know say you have to control the mind you have to control the body you have to control your senses you have to do this you have to do that you have to go here you have to do this it's just too much control the body control the mind and then when you control all your desires then brahman will come can't control the desires we talked about it yesterday we learn to manage them and so therefore and the other myth the other popular myth which is a mistake about brahman is that brahmananda is very very different from everyday ananda why because it is brahmananda it has to be different this is the argument it has to be completely totally different then how are you going to get the person to leave chocolate cake ananda for brahmananda which the person doesn't even know why will the person uh, go from this to the other and how if there are two kinds of ananda then what happens to non duality it takes a hit you cannot say ekameva dvitiyam so non duality one single one you cannot say then so what can you say you can't say anything much you can you can't say you know you you can't say anything much at all and so therefore you have to uh, allow it to just uh, you know allow it to be and so the ananda that you experience in the world is but a remnant of this brahman this is what we have to understand a little more clearly oh so uh, brahmananda is more it's not about more or less it is about uh, the you know that which is finite or infinite when the uh, the object be, the when the delight or the joy whatever you want to call it is based on the object then it is an object object centered happiness and this object centric happiness what happens to this it basically has an end 
and it has a beginning and an end until the object came into sight i i was not happy then the object was with me then i am happy and then what the object went away and again i am unhappy so like this there is a there is a object centric happiness is always finite because the objects are finite here we are talking about the the ananda that is centered on you and the you being infinite the ananda is non separate from you and so how to understand this to understand this one has to one has to uh, what is that you know give up the subjectivity more objective more vairagya more objectivity less subjectivity so i wanted to mention that here and so was number uh 9 स्वूपाधानुति मनुष्य शृणोती हवा निमुक्त भवेद्विष्णुरद प्रमाण स्वूपाधानुति पठे दादराक्ति भावो मनुष्य शृणोती हवा निमुक्त भवेद्विष्णुरद प्रमाण सो दिस् स्वूप अनुसंधान ही समिंग अफियर स्वूप अनुसंधान स्तुतिम स्तुतिम प्रेज स्तुति इज प्रेज praise of what self enquiry and contemplation in the the, the 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 praise of self enquiry in the form of this text swarupa anusandhana rupa rupam stutim patheed the one who studies patheed how adar a a patheed adarat the one who studies this with an open minded respect open minded respect open minded respect and bhakti uh, and devotion manushya the person the person who who would read this with with uh, with with, with uh, what is that with respect with an attitude of devotion etc then shrinoti ihava either the one who reads it or listens to the teachings nityam udyukta chittah udyukta chittah means attentive mind not multitasking <laughs> while taking the class you know you are the body is in the class uh, and and what the mind is elsewhere somebody is playing on the some video game on the computer another person is uh, what is that uh, um, doing some multitasking writing an email the third person is answering the phone like that not like that attentive where without uh, with an unswavering mind more uh, more qualifications for this knowledge are given here the one who uh, uh, what the one who does this with an unswavering mind you know uh, unwavering mind the mind doesn't swerve from anywhere from here to there attentive mind the one who has an attentive mind what happens bhavet would become would become what atra in this life uh, iha atra in this life itself eva indeed what you know vishnu bhavet becomes that or vishnu is all pervades attains brahman as oneself in fact the word attains must be in apostrophes because there is nothing to attain you are uh, you you already are what you wish to seek and you are separated from that by what you are separated the, from that by a uh, by your own ignorance not by time space or action you are separated the, from that by ignorance and so therefore you know you, you you would become uh, you would attain that oneness uh, and you recognize that you are non separate from vishnu 
you are this vishnu veda pramanat veda pramanat means two meanings are there according to the promise made by the veda vedanta or according to the means of knowledge called vedanta because exposing yourself to this means of knowledge guru mukhat with the help of the guru the, the hearing it through the mouth of the guru then what happens mm, the uh, you know the person gains this knowledge this is what you know verses 9 and 10 are what are called halashruti halashruti means the uh, uh, you know every author knows that you know nobody does anything without any reason or reward so halashruti means the listing of the rewards uh, of this study so what will happen to me if i do this study what will happen to me if my self ignorance or when my self ignorance drops off what will happen to me and that is what is said very beautifully in verse number 9 that you don't have to go to vishnu loka you understand right here in this body not even after death you understand you alone are vishnu there is no other vishnu than you and so so says the vedanta the the, the pramana the authority which is vedanta says that exposing myself to this pramana i understand that i am nothing but brahman then finally the last word uh, the verse vignana navam parigrihya kashchit tare yad gnana mayam bhavabdhim gnana sina yogi vichidya trishnam vishnu padam yati sa eva dhanya विज्ञाननावंपरिगृह्य having caught hold of what vijnana navam the boat of self knowledge <laughs> self knowledge is the boat and what is there to cross the notion of samsara not even a notion of samsara taret the one the one who cross what agnana mayam agnana mayam means agnana vikara the products of ignorance the broods of ignorance and what are the broods of ignorance vikara or modification of ignorance kama you know avidya has a spawn a, a child called kama when the grandchild become kama means desire because of this desire the person keeps on wanting to do this that to useless things and that is karma kama leads to karma karma leads to papa punya more omissions and commissions uh, accruing that and then then papa punya uh, uh, leads to punar janma rebirth and therefore this cycle called samsara continues here what happens i am not no longer in a flood sam and a jet sam in this ocean in this vast ocean of ignorance which is actually a notion of ignorance i have now gained this knowledge having got on the boat of the shastra i am on the shastra boat and the oars are taking me away from the dysfunctional relationships and the uh, and as i move forward i see that the walls of the boat are made of the words of the upanishad the boat man is none other than bhagavan krishna in fact the same thing is uh, said in the gita dhyana shloka bhishma drona tata jayadratha jala gandhara nilotpala शल्यग्राहवती कृपेण वहनी कर्मने न वेला कुला अश्वत्थाम विकर्ण घोर मकर दुर्योधना वर्तिनी सोतीर्णा खलु पांडवैरण नदी कैवर्तक केशव दिस इज व्हाट इज सेड इन द गीता ध्यान श्लोक bhishma drona bhishma and drona are the two banks of this horrible river river of samsara jayadratha is the water 
Gandhara, okay, these are all the various kings who are involved in the battle. The Gandhara is the is a lotus in the river. And uh, Shalya uh, is Grahavati, is, is a big shark. And then uh, Graha means anything that bites, shark, alligator, etc. Shalya Grahavati, Kripena Vahani, Kripa, the another king is a uh, reptile. Karnena Vela Kula, no, Kripa is not the reptile, Kripa is the force, Vahani, the force with which the river is going is Kripa. Karnena Vela Kula. And then Karna is the, the, the ripples and the tides, the, the waves on the surface of this river. Akula means terrifying. And then, uh, uh, then Duryodhana, uh, then Ashwatthama, Vikarna, Ghora, Makara. Ashwatthama and Vikarna are terrifying uh, alligators in this river of samsara. Then what else? Then the uh, terrifying alligators. Duryodhana Avartini. Duryodhana is the hidden, sneaky kind of a whirlpool undercurrent. You think it's fine and you know how to swim and you go inside and then you are swept up because it catches hold of your leg. That is Duryodhana. But still the Pandavas cross this water. How? He's terrifying. Sa Uttirna Pandavaihi Rananadi. This terrifying river of blood. This is this terrifying river of battle. How did they cross? Sa Uttirna Katham Aivartakaha Keshavaha. Keshava Bhagavan Krishna Eva happened to be the boatman. Ah, very beautiful imagery. That is there in the Bhagavad Gita because it is a kind of a what's the, extrapolation from, because he was driving the chariot. See, dr Bhagavan driving the chariot means what? Every arrow has to first to hit Krishna before it hits Arjuna. He could deflect all the arrows even though he said, I'm not taking part in the war. He could do all kinds of things. He was just very, very amazing. He could do all kinds of things. And so here, he, this self-knowledge is my only refuge. Self-knowledge is, is the, this is the boat. This is the boat and Bhagavan is, is driving this boat out of the danger of the alligators of doubt, the sharks of despair and the stingrays of uh, revenge, uh, jealousy, anger, etc. And the sea beads of uh, dysfunctional relationships. Here I'm caught in all this and I'm thinking it is samsara and Vijnana Nauka comes. Oh, it's going to rescue me. Yes, but not in the way that you think. It's going to rescue you by saying, you don't need to be saved. You are already saved. You are already saved. That is the teaching. We don't have a salvific theology. We don't say you need to be saved. You are already saved. You are already free. And you have to understand that. You have to understand that. Pared Agnanamayam. Agnanamayam means this, this uh, that which is the products of ignorance, such as Kama, Krodha, etc. And then Bhavabdhim, the ocean of samsara. Bhava means becoming. Abdhi means ocean. Bhavabdhi means the ocean of becoming, where one always wants to become something or the other when all the time. Bhaved, uh, you know, Bhavabdhim Tareth. How, how Tareth, how to do that? Jnana Asina, Jnana Asina. Asina means the sight, you know, the sickle. The sickle or the sword of knowledge. By cutting the cords of dysfunction with the swords of knowledge. By cutting the cords of longings. Vichidya, Vichidya means cutting. Having cut Trishna, I want this, I want that. All the longings are called uh, Trishna. And when you, when you just uh, swish back and forth, when you go swish, swish with the, uh, with the sword of knowledge, the sword of Viveka, Vairagya, discrimination and Brahmagnanam, the sword of Brahmagnanam, you go swish, swish, all the longing drops to the wayside. All the longing drops to the wayside. Vishnu ho padam yati and gains that Brahman which is 
all pervasive, which is oneself, Vishnoho Paravam Padam Yati Sa Eva Dhanyaha. That person alone is blessed, very, very much blessed. So, in con that was the last verse. In conclusion, what I would like to say is that uh, this knowledge of Brahman, Brahma Jnanam, what does it entail? You know what it entails? It entails the uh, it entails something which is wonderful. It entails the, 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 the reduction of subjectivity and uh, you know the, the reduction of subjectivity and the uh, increase in objectivity. That is what it entails. The whole thing is based on that. So when I come to the knowledge, I am basically having uh, no, uh, no, no, no understanding uh, at all. And I think therefore everything is separate from me. I am separate from everything else. Everything is out to get me. I am helpless, hopeless, and under the spell of all kinds of people and situations. This is what the, the, the this is what the thing, thinking is. The thinking is that. And then coming to the knowledge, I see that actually there are two jagats. There is the jagat that is in my head, and then there is the actual jagat. And the two are not the same. There is a vast gap between the two. In fact, the jagat outside is benign, is subject, is objective. And the jagat in my head is very much subjective. Very much subjective. It is not, uh, you know, it is not objective at all. It is definitely very much subjective. And it is, it is based, and what do, what do I mean by subjective? It is based on my strong preferences, strong prejudices. It is based on a lot of uh, uh, pains, sorrows, uh, needs that were not met, all kinds of things. It's based on what I think I want from the jagat and I'm not getting. It, it is based on seeing the jagat as some kind of a milch cow. It is meant just to fulfill my desires of which there are many because I don't understand that I'm not a wanting person. I think I have to be accomplished I think I have to be validated. I think I have to be famous. I think I have to be rich in order for to, to I th in order to matter, in order to get rid of insecurity centered on the self. This is the subjective projection on the jagat. The jagat simply is, and it is an extension of you. It is mithya. It cannot really make the you the satya into a purna individual. That purnatvam is yourself alone. Nothing can make you purna because you're already purna. And this is what we have to uh, understand in uh, Vedanta Shastra. And then when you understand this in Vedanta Shastra, what happens? You, know, you, you get an objectivity. You see the jagat as it is. And we have discussed this already. So the, uh, the interim step is to uh, Ishwarize the Jagat to make it that which is given by Ishwara first and that which is created by Ishwara first step and then the second step is to see it as uh, as a manifestation of Ishwara. Wherever there is Jagat, I see Ishwara. This is what whatever is there, I see as Ishwara and then I understand finally that this Ishwara is none other than me alone. And when you understand this, that is what is the, uh, uh, you know, that is what is the crux of Vedanta Shastra, which this Vijnana Nauka is, uh, 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 you know, is unfolding, has unfolded uh, 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 as a way of uh, keeping, you know, what is that rising above the sorrow, the pain, etc. by understanding that it does not have any effect on me at all. And so, uh, you know, somebody had asked for a, yes, a little bit of a meditation. So we will do that now. And uh, um, I, I will guide you through it. And then, then we will conclude. Okay. So maybe 15, 20 minutes, we can uh, do a little bit of a meditation. So wherever you are, sit comfortably.
head, neck and back are in a single straight line. Eyes softly closed. I start by paying attention to the breathing. Without changing the rhythm of the breath, I simply watch the breathing. The cool air entering the nostrils, the slightly warm air exiting the nostrils. Before we begin the meditation, there is an advice given in the Bhagavad Gita. Sparshan Bahyan Bahihi Kritva Dhyaye. May one meditate after keeping the outside world outside. The outside world of names and forms namely the jagat does not belong does not have a role when i want to go within and when i look deeply it is only some portions of the outside world that trouble me not the whole world. For example, I can visualize, I now visualize a range of mountains. In relation to these mountains, I am a free person not demanding, appreciated, contented. Happy. Why? Because I do not have an agenda for the mountains. I do not wish for them to be a certain way. Taller, shorter, etc. I'm happy however they are. Next, I visualize a river. Again, in relation to the river, I don't feel bound. I'm free. I am objective, non-demanding, contented. Can I retain this, this same demeanor with regard to people? Perhaps people in general, but not people specifically 
especially if one is close to those people. I visualize the mother. This is how my mother was or is in my perception. Now, visualizing the mother is, is very, very different. We can see from visualizing the river. Very different. Why? Because the river is outside. The mother is outside, but also inside in the form of unfulfilled expectations, in the form of worry, in the form of concern. Therefore, retaining the love and the care for the mother, I grant her the freedom to be who she is, who she was in my perception. When I'm able to do this, the extent to which I'm able to do this, I have objectivity with regard to the mother. Father, same thing. I visualize the father. I grant him this understanding, this is who the father was or is in my perception. I let him have the freedom to be whoever he was, whoever he is, in my perception. retaining the care for the father, I grant him the freedom to be whoever he was, whoever he is. The extent to which I'm able to do this, I am free. The father is no longer inside the head. The mother is no longer internalized. Om Namaha Om Namaha Om Namaha Then I visualize this body. This is how the body is. Many things about this body, I do not, the, I, I cannot change. Height, weight, color of skin, etc. This is how the body is. Accept the body however it is. We grant it the freedom to be however it is. Om Namaha Om Namaha Om Namaha Om Now I come to the mind. This is how the mind is. Fickle. Restless. Fearful.
I am not the mind. I am the observer of the mind. I'm much more than the body. I'm that sentient consciousness who is the observer of the body, of the breathing, of the mind. I am a simple conscious being who is relating to Bhagavan in the form of a mantra. For today, we will just use Om Namah Shiva. Just chant it softly. And whenever there is a uh, interruption, a distraction, that's okay. We just bring it back, back to the mantra. Chant now. Allowing the chant to stop. Recognizing the calm that comes from this time spent with oneself, spent with Ishvara as oneself. If you are comfortable being who you are, acknowledge that to yourself. I am comfortable being myself, which means I do not need any comforting from anybody at all, at least for today. Om Shanti 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 Hari Hi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Hi Om When you are ready, you can slowly open your eyes. And then if there are any questions, uh, we can you can please read them to me and I will answer them. Sure, Swami. Thank you so much once again. It was a very good, very uh, silence the meditation. Thank you so much. So the first question is uh, what are the syllables in Om? A, mm. uh, U and M. Mm. These are the syllables. Okay. Uh, next, when I see people around in suffering, I am disturbed. How do I react? Yeah, so that that disturbance comes from the um, the two things. Okay. 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 Now we are back. Oh, so, uh, I had to restart the computer. I don't know what happened. So two things are happening if there is disturbance. Uh, one is the general human empathy. 
and what is the general human empathy the general human empathy is is that one is wired one is wired to feel uh, something when other fellow beings are suffering naturally one is wired one says oh my god something is happening i can you know i can uh, relate to that it could well, very well be me so this is the general human empathy this is the first reason why there is pain and why i am disturbed the second reason why there is pain and disturbance is because uh, th that suffering of somebody else touches some deep part of me some uh, unresolved issue from the past is suddenly brought up is triggered i see somebody crying and because they didn't get their way and all the times that i didn't get the way somehow there is that connection and uh, so this is this is where i get uh, disturbed these are the two reasons first of all uh, the you know the the this feeling of disturbance is there then the second uh, thing is what can i do about it that you know this is the first is to uh, say the, is to see that this suffering or whatever you are, you know whatever appears as this suffering we have to understand that uh, it is from the standpoint of the relative relative but not absolute standpoint so you, you you when you are disturbed first thing to do is to see within and see what is it that is that is it is touching within me is it uh, painful because of some uh, issue that i am reminded of uh, uh, so my own wanting nature is brought up or my own fear my own desire my own pain my own sorrow something is brought up is that why there is this uh, feeling then you get into the place of the observer and you can see that the feeling is mithya you can do something about it you can pray you can uh, you know take a walk you can change the channel you know in the mind <laughs> like yeah. when you're watching a horror movie on tv and it is scaring you out of existence you don't continue to watch it <laughs> you quickly yeah. go like this with the remote here you to take the remote on the head and go like this that's yeah. what you have to do you change the channel quickly you don't be in that place of pain of sorrow of difficulty etc you don't go there you don't be there you change the channel take a walk you know go somewhere or do something you know put some you know do some errand and then when you change the channel you understand that you you falsify the disturbance you don't you don't wallow and marinate in the disturbance this is the idea this is for the short term long term again uh, you know if that pain is recurrent and chronic then you can do something about it yoga any any kind of act of self love uh, including you know stu the study of the upanishad yoga therapy all these things will help a lot and then being you know in a calm state of mind surrounding yourself with input because we put all kinds of just like we don't eat everything that we see similarly we can't expose ourselves to all kinds of uh, stimulations from the outer world you have to be selectively consuming you don't watch everything that comes your way you don't do everything that we don't indulge in everything so then that means you make the space to for that calmness for that shanti to rise very good question is mm -hmm. there a, are there anything yes. else yes okay. how does one reach the brahmananda state yeah you are already in brahmananda mm -hmm. you don't reach because it is never away from you so you can't reach there it you cannot go there you cannot understand you know it's not away from you you have to understand it and then how do you understand it keep attending classes like these that's what it is keep uh -huh. immersing yourself in the knowledge and then it becomes clearer and clearer yeah wonderful another question when i say i'm separated from dhamman is it separation from my thought or separation by ignorance suppose separation. ha suppose i am in the thought that i am dhamman then 
am i enjoined with brahman yeah you are not enjoying with brahman you are brahman so you are enjoying as brahman <laughs> ah and it is not brahman is not a thought it is you and separation is due to ignorance that's the only thing that separates you it's a notion of separation it's like a small child crying for its mother even though the mother is right there it doesn't know that this what it is so similarly the jiva separated from the source is an as though separation because you can never be separated there's only one thing there are no two things so the separation or the feeling of being bereft is because i don't know brahman as myself that's why right wonderful we have one question on swadharma and swabhava uh, is it relevant to ask here uh, swami ji oh, so okay. are they yeah swadharma so and swabhava uh, yeah. are they unchanging swabhava is not swadharma swabhava means your nature swadharma means what you were born to do and how to do how to express the purpose of your life in the everyday that is swadharma and uh, uh, can they be changed if it is easy sure but you know if supposing somebody has two left feet and they want to have swadharma as a dancer it's going to be very very difficult <laughs> if somebody is torn deaf and wants to be ms subbu lakshmi it's going to be very very difficult you you're not going to be able to do it the 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 fellow cannot carry a tune so the swadharma must be in keeping with your talents in keeping with your limitations that is swadharma and if you can find something else to do that is in keeping with your talents and limitations sure go ahead no problem it can be changed mm. wonderful all right thank you so much swamini ji it was a wonderful wonderful experience to go through the Uh, text along with your guidance and also to uh, conclude with the meditation uh, yes yes it all happened thanks to people's requests it happened thank you again for inviting me and uh, look forward to seeing you again in some other context definitely definitely oh and please oh. send me the recording after we are done you have sure. my email sure sure uh, or on whatsapp whichever one ओम पूर्णम पूर्णमिदम पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाग पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ थैंक यू एवरीबडी टेक् केयर ओम